In this video, we're going to talk about several getting started tips for new Mac OS installs. And you definitely don't want to miss this if you're a new Mac user. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. The first tip is to adjust tracking speed. Now this should go without saying, but if you're a new Mac user, you may not realize that your tracking speed is actually really slow by default. Like it takes several swipes to get to the other side of the screen on your trackpad, uh, and it's just not as efficient. So speeding up the tracking is always the very first thing I do on a new Mac OS install. We wanna open up system preferences and then click on trackpad. There you'll see tracking speed. Now you don't have to adjust it all the way to the right, but you definitely wanna make it faster than the default setting. As you can see, I can move my cursor much more efficiently now. And don't forget, mouse and trackpad settings are separate, so you have to go into the mouse section of preferences in order to adjust the tracking speed, if for instance, you're using a magic mouse. And speaking of mice, if that is your preferred way to control the interface, you want to make sure you enable right click in the preferences. Now, even in 2019, right click is not enabled by default in Mac OS. So you're going to need to go into system preferences, go to mouse, and then choose secondary click. Just make sure you check that. And by default, it's set to click on the right side. So that will enable your secondary click, which lends you more options at the click of a mouse button which again, makes you more efficient in Mac OS. Another thing that I recommend you do on a new Mac OS install is to alter your dock. Don't leave it as default because a lot of times there's apps there that you simply have no, <laughs> no um, interest in using there. And there are apps that aren't in the dock that you wanna use frequently. So what I like to do is I like to just simply drag and release like that to remove applications. You can also right click, go to options and select remove from dock. So either way you wanna do it, it doesn't matter. The point is you wanna customize your dock by removing applications that you probably won't use that frequently. So in this case, I'm gonna remove Siri as well because I'm, not, I'm never gonna invoke Siri from the dock. I'm gonna remove reminders as well because I don't use the stock reminders app. Photos, news, I don't use any of those. So I'm cleaning up my dock to make it a little more simple and then of course I can go and add applications to the dock that I know I'm going to use frequently. So you can see I have Final Cut Pro and Affinity Photo running here. So I just wanna right click and select keep in dock in the options section and that will keep Final Cut Pro in the dock or I can simply drag an application in the dock like that and it will automatically enable keep in dock. So even when you quit the application, the app stays in the dock for easy access. Now let's talk about customizing the dock a bit. One of the things that you'll notice is that when you minimize an application, that minimized app appears on the right side of the dock, just like that. Now the problem with that, well, it's not really a problem, but the issue that can occur is that if you have a lot of applications minimized, it can start to fill up your dock and it could just make things seem a little cluttered. So here you can see I have about five different applications there that make the dock even wider than it would have been otherwise because there's additional items in the dock. So to remedy this, we can go into system preferences and then go to the dock section and then enable minimize windows into application icon. So when we check that, this is gonna make it so that when we minimize an application like this, it minimizes, notice, it minimizes into the dock icon itself instead of appearing on the side. Now the downside of that is that you don't get a preview of the running application, but the advantage is that it keeps your dock nice and clean. So you'll have to decide whether or not you like that. Personally, I do, but I can also understand preferring the default method. Now, although you can control volume via something like the touch bar, for instance, or the shortcut keys on your MacBook Pro, I definitely recommend adding the volume indicator or the volume controls to your menu bar. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Just open up system preferences, click on sound, and then click where it says show volume in menu bar. Now this is great because not only does it allow you to control the volume, but it also allows you to adjust your output device on the fly. And not only that, if you hold the option key and click the volume, you can adjust your output or input device right there on the fly, right from the menu bar. So that's a much more efficient way to adjust your volume settings. 
Now, one of the most annoying things for me in macOS Mojave is when I take a screenshot, for instance, use Command Shift 3 to take a screenshot like that. It puts a little floating thumbnail there for a few seconds before that times out and then it appears on your desktop like normal. Now, the point of that floating thumbnail is to allow you to open it up to use markup in preview, things like that. But to be honest, it can slow you down, especially if you're used to working with screenshots, if you have a workflow down. Here's what you can do to fix that. Press Command Shift 5 on your keyboard to invoke the screenshot interface and then click the options button and select show floating thumbnail. Basically, you wanna uncheck that. And so that will disable the floating thumbnail. And when you take a screenshot going forward, it will just immediately appear, as you can see right there, on the desktop, ready to take action. So in other words, no more floating thumbnail to deal with. It works just like it did pre-Mojave, and your screenshots appear immediately on your desktop, ready to take action. Now, speaking of screenshots, one thing that I definitely like to do is to disable the shadow that appears when taking screenshots of a window using Command Shift 4 and then pressing the space bar and then clicking the, to take a screenshot like this. So basically, I'm taking a screenshot of system preferences, but by default, notice what happens here. It places a shadow around the screenshot. And although that looks nice, I don't particularly like it when I'm uploading these images to 9to5Mac, for instance, for publishing. I like to keep my screenshots nice and simple. So I like to eliminate that shadow. Let me show you how to do that right here. Just open a terminal window. You can open up Launchpad and go to Other, then click on Terminal. And now just type the following, default space right space com dot apple dot screen capture space disabled dash shadow space dash bool space true and then press return and then type in kill all space system UI server enter and that's it. So now I'm gonna take that screenshot again, take the screenshot of the window and notice no shadow. So let's compare the two screenshots together. The one with the shadow on the left and the shadowless one on the right. For my workflow, enabling hot corners is just an absolute must in macOS. I cannot use a Mac without hot corners. What hot corners basically allow you to do is to execute shortcuts at all four corners of your display by just simply dragging your mouse to that portion of the screen. So what we need to do here is go into System Preferences, open Mission Control, and then click where it says hot corners in the bottom left-hand corner. So guess what? You have four hot corners because there are four corners on a display. So what you'd want to do here is just basically go in and configure this to your liking. Here's how I like to set it up. I like to have desktop on the bottom left-hand corner, launch pad in the upper left-hand corner, mission control in the upper right, and put display to sleep in the lower right. All right, so we're finished. Let's click OK and let's start using these hot corners. Let me show you why this is so cool. So drag my mouse to the bottom left hand corner, it invokes the desktop view uh, so I can access whatever's on that desktop no matter how many windows I have displayed on screen. Upper left hand corner invokes launch pad, upper right invokes mission control, I can add a new desktop or access my other desktops. Bottom right puts my display to sleep and you're doing all this without touching the keyboard. So bottom left hand corner shows the desktop, moves all the other windows out of the way and I can interface with whatever's on that desktop with ease. Hot corners are a must have in my opinion. Now here's another thing you definitely want to enable on macOS, the ability to tab between all controls using the tab key on your keyboard. Now, by default, macOS doesn't let you tab between all controls. So if I'm hitting tab right now and nothing's happening, it's just staying in that little search box. So it's not jumping down to the other controls. To fix that, you need to go into System Preferences keyboard, click Shortcuts, and then at the bottom, you see where it says all controls, just click that. And now guess what folks, we can tab between all controls on screen. So here I'm gonna go back to doc, I'm gonna press tab now. Notice how I'm tabbing between all those different controls. That is the power of that option. And it is a absolute must do in my opinion, if you like to use your keyboard to control things on screen. So highly recommend enabling this option on new Mac OS installs. I'm also a big believer in customizing the Finder sidebar to your liking. So what I like to do here is I like to go, well, first of all, you can see how Finder looks by default. So you have your tags, you have just a few favorites. 
I like to drag certain things right out of the finder sidebar like that to get rid of them, but I also like to go into preferences and enable some of the user folders directly in the sidebar. So for instance, enable movies, music, pictures, and even your, your base folder. So you can see right there. I know I say folder weird, go ahead and make fun of it. All right, so I also like to uncheck recent tags because I don't use tags normally in my workflow. Uh, so that's just a couple of ways you can customize the finder sidebar to your liking. My advice isn't to necessarily copy exactly what I've done here, but just make it work for your particular workflow. And the last thing we'll talk about here is enabling stacks. Stacks first appeared in macOS Mojave, and this is a really great feature for keeping your desktop nice and tidy. So here in this example, you can see my desktop is anything but, but if I right click and select use stacks, look what happens. It basically sorts everything in their own little folders. So if you click one of those stacks, it expands it and you can access all the items within with ease. Another really cool thing about stacks is that if you swipe on it like that, you can actually scroll through and scrub through all the items in a stack. That's really cool. So I'm scrolling through screenshots. So by default, it groups your stacks by kind, but you can customize that even further by right-clicking and selecting group stacks by. And remember, you need macOS Mojave in order to take advantage of stacks. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at over 10 ways that I like to personally customize my new macOS install. What's your favorite tip? Do you have any additional things that you like to do? Please let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.